Let us stand for our call to worship. I lift my eyes to the hills, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let us join together this Memorial Day weekend for our opening patriotic hymn, Let Us Stand. conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I want to welcome everybody this Memorial Weekend to Raven Gap Presbyterian Church and to the beautiful mountains of Northeast Georgia. It's a little different this year as the past nine or ten weeks have been very different for us. This is normally the time where we see many of our friends who are seasonal arriving and here. Uh, we would have already been to two services uh, by this time um, and uh, even maybe even looking at having to do a third this year based on our January, February attendance before uh, the pandemic struck. We want to welcome you all joining us online. We are glad that you are watching and uh, a way to stay connected and to have your worship each and every Sunday as you would experience and expect it if you were here. We miss you. We cannot wait to be back together, but until it is safe, until it is uh, advisable that we do that and uh, the risks are low, uh, we will continue to do our video services as we are right now. Um, we look forward to special occasions where we can uh, be together and share the warmth, the friendship, the joy, that is a big part of who we are at Raven Gap Presbyterian Church. All of your announcements are in your bulletin, but again, we are abbreviated schedules because of COVID-19. We are not having any activities in the church currently. We do have Bible studies via Zoom, Tuesday morning for the men and Tuesday morning for the women, as well as Thursday morning and Thursday night for the women. Uh, we look forward to uh, having Vacation Bible School when that opportunity presents itself. Uh, right now, uh, via our session meeting last night, we are uh, anticipating that we will not be able to have Vacation Bible School this summer, again, due to safety and risk of exposure for COVID-19. But we will plan a bigger, better, more exciting one uh, as soon as that is possible, be that in the fall or next summer. As our children come forward for our children's message, if you will, stand and greet those around you with the right hand of Christian fellowship. Boys and girls, for a snack today, I had a little trouble. The grocery store shelves were a little bare, and particularly the one I was counting on was not there, so I have Rice Krispie treats because, you know, there's just not much better than a Rice Krispie treat. Today, we are celebrating Memorial Weekend, and Normally, this would be the time when you'd be getting out of school, but not this year. You've been out of school for many weeks. You've been hopefully learning online and doing homeschool activities and worksheets, but that moment, that moment of getting out of school, that last day is not quite the same. Today, we're going to talk about a passage in Scripture where Jesus talks about the ultimate, ultimate thing that we can do in love which is to give ourselves to protect someone else. We're called to remember on Memorial Day because it is a time when we remember the men and women who have protected us all through our nation's history. They have made great sacrifices. They have traveled to faraway places. They have been freezing cold and super hot, muddy and wet and parched and dry. Some of them didn't get to come home. Some of them made the ultimate sacrifice. They gave their lives so that we could enjoy being home and having dinner around the table and be free to choose the kind of work we wanted to do and work hard to get the education that we desired. We are a people about remembering. We remember each and every Sunday what Jesus did for us. We remember so much so that our communion table says, this do in remembrance of me. Each and every Sunday, we remember a sacrifice that Christ made for us so that we could live in freedom with joy and happiness. We have two simple rules to follow, two simple commands that he gives us. Love God and love your neighbor. I hope we can do that more so each and every day, but especially right now, because neighbors are helping each other. Each and every morning, maybe your friend's mom or dad gets up and goes to work at the police department or 
uh, a military base or uh, driving and working as an emergency medical technician or a doctor or a nurse. And it's dangerous. And we want to remember them in our prayers. And we want to remember their sacrifice. And we want to give thanks. Can we say a prayer together? Lord, we give you thanks for those who protect and who care for us, who run toward danger and not away from it. Lord, we give you thanks for the brave men and women who serve us in so many ways, in uniforms, in scrubs. We give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on Where was Jesus? When the life I built came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now There was Jesus, there was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces circumstances. We are not at war with another nation, but we are at war with a dreaded invisible enemy, a virus. I found a prayer by Austin Fleming that was written for Xavier University. If you will, please bow your heads with me. In the quiet sanctuaries of our own hearts, let each of us name and call on the one whose power over us is great 
and gentle, firm and forgiving, holy and healing. You have created us. You sustain us. You calls up, call us to live in peace. Hear our prayer this day. Hear our prayer for all who have died, whose hearts and hopes are known to you alone. Hear our prayer for those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own, and give us hearts as generous as theirs. Hear our prayer for those who gave their lives in the service of others and accept the gift of their great sacrifice. Help us to shape and make a world where we will lay down the arms of war and turn our swords into plowshares for a harvest of justice and peace. Comfort those who grieve the loss of their loved ones and let your healing be the hope in our hearts. Hear our prayer this day and in your mercy answer us in the name of all that is holy, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now bring to God his tithes and our offerings.
pray. Lord, we are humbled and blessed, and we give you thanks for the gift of our life, our work, and the reward that comes with work done well. Lord, we give thanks for the continued generosity, the faithful giving of this congregation, both near and far, to continue and support the work and witness of the church in a very unique and very challenging moment in time. Lord, we give you thanks for the faithfulness, for the graciousness, for the bountiful, generous love of this congregation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. scripture lesson. John chapter 15, beginning with verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands, and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. This is Memorial Weekend, the unofficial, the unofficial start of summer here in the United States. And here in the mountains, we know that very much so because in a normal year, our traffic doubles. Folks coming to enjoy the mountains to escape the heat of Atlanta and Jacksonville and Birmingham and Orlando and Miami. They come here to escape, to feel the coolness of the mountains in the evening and the morning, to be inspired by the beautiful peaks and the lush green forest all around us. This is Memorial Weekend, and it is the unofficial start of the summer season. This year, Memorial Day, I saw an interesting cartoon. There are three things that you need to remember, and it really applies each and every year. The price of hot dogs, which have gone up. The price of gasoline, which has come down. The price of freedom which is priceless always. Memorial Day is a very unique holiday. It has its roots in Decoration Day, a holiday that began arguably in the South. We don't have a lot of accurate history. We have a lot of myth and a lot of competing claims. The gentleman that gets the most credit for starting Memorial Day actually made a speech where he celebrated sort of in pointing a finger at those in the North that those in the South were doing much more to decorate the graves of their soldiers after the Civil War than folks in the North were. He challenged them to take a day to honor those who had died in service. There are many, many stories about when, where, how, why, one that I like to choose is that it began in Columbus, Georgia. Why do I prefer that one? Well, it's Georgia. 
and I was born in Columbus. But there's some things you may not know about the day. It is a day when we recognize and give thanks for those who made the ultimate sacrifice, those whose lives were given on the field of battle to protect and preserve our freedoms. There is something new about Memorial Day, something maybe you don't know. I did not know about it until I was researching for this sermon today. We have on Memorial Day, by law approved, a national moment of remembrance. Now, I'm sure you think this has been around 100 years or 125 years, but no, in fact, Memorial Day did not become an official holiday until under Lyndon Baines Johnson as president. But this moment, this national moment of remembrance is even newer. It's an annual event that asks Americans wherever they are at 3 p.m. local time on Memorial Day to pause for the duration of one minute, one minute, to remember those who have died in military service to the United States. The time 3 p.m. was chosen because it is the time when most Americans are enjoying time off of work for the national holiday. The moment was first proclaimed in May of 2000. For Memorial Day that year, it was put into law by the United States Congress in December of that very year, 2000. So this is the 20th anniversary, the 20th celebration of our national moment of remembrance. The idea for the moment was born in May, 1996, when children touring Lafayette Park in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, were asked by the commission's director what Memorial Day means. They responded, that's the day the pools open up. Yeah, if you're 10 years old, that's all you care about. It's the day the pools open up. A May 2000 Gallup poll revealed that only 28% of Americans knew the true meaning of Memorial Day. Hard to imagine. The White House Commission on Remembrance was established by Congress to promote the values of Memorial Day by acts of remembrance throughout the year. The moment does not replace traditional Memorial Day events, but it is a specific time, a designated moment to remember the legacy of the holiday. As detailed in the official act, Congress called on the people of the United States in a symbolic act of unity to observe a national moment of remembrance to honor the men and women of the United States who died in pursuit of freedom and peace. As laid out in the public law, law number 106-579, the national moment of remembrance is to be practiced by all Americans throughout the nation at 3 p.m. local time. At the same time, a number of organizations throughout the country also observe the moment. Every single Major League Baseball game stops. I did not know that. And this year, it doesn't look like we're going to have baseball, so I can't watch to make sure it happens. Also at that moment, 3 o'clock on Memorial Day, every single Amtrak train blows its whistle across the entire country. And there are hundreds of nationwide participants that stop and pause to remind Americans why we celebrate Memorial Day. It's not about the pool. It's not about the beach. It's not about the river, the lake, the hike. It's not even about hot dogs and hamburgers. It's about those who are not with us, who went before us, and fought, fought to protect our freedom, to defend liberty and justice, to help others in a time of need. I can think of no greater verse of scripture that captures the meaning of Memorial Day than John 15, 13. You just heard it, but to remind you, Jesus is speaking and he says, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. If you Google no greater love, you'll be surprised as I was that the first thing that pops up is a movie, 
a documentary by that title, then the actual Bible verse, and then a made-for-TV movie with that title about a husband and wife separating. I think it must work out and they get back together in the end. Why else would they use a title, No Greater Love Than This? No Greater Love, the movie, the documentary, it was released on Veterans Day a few years ago. It's available online to rent. I recommend it to you. I watched it last night. It is moving. It is powerful. The movie is an award-winning documentary. It invites the audience to experience war and its aftermath from a soldier's perspective. No Greater Love in the credits says, it depicts the combat deployment of the legendary no slack battalion, the 101st Airborne Division, through the eyes of Officer Justin David Roberts. While deployed in Afghanistan, Justin decided to carry a camera to document the hardships his unit endured. He captured not only the gritty reality of war, but also the incredibly strong bond that is forged between soldiers. Little did a soldier named Justin Roberts know that his decision to carry a camera would culminate in a documentary film, No Greater Love. No Greater Love. Layering real war footage with heartfelt interviews with soldiers and Gold Star family members, No Greater Love seeks to help others understand the experience of war and the personal struggles of soldiers both on the battlefield and once they return home. There are over 20 suicides per day in the veteran population and countless struggles with depression, PTSD, and addiction. No Greater Love strives to create a dialogue about war and about promoting healing. The Washington Post said, No Greater Love is a remarkable film about war and its effects on soldiers. Variety Magazine, the Hollywood trade publication said, in No Greater Love, Justin Roberts skillfully interweaves his video with post-war interviews in which no slack vets comment on the events caught on camera and much more. General Stanley McChrystal says, No Greater Love cuts to the heart of why our warriors serve and needs to be seen by every single American. The director, the officer, the member of the 101st that took a camera with him into battle writes this. He says, the only way that you can really come back from war is with love. And it has to come from friends. It has to come from family members, from neighbors, and the people you were fighting for. And it has to come from each other. That is the only way that we can fully come home. The director, the Army officer, Justin D. Roberts, has another title. It's Reverend. See, he was an Army chaplain deployed and serving in Afghanistan and was side by side with his troops. John 15, verse 9 begins. As the Father has loved me. Remember, Jesus is speaking here. If you have an old red letter edition, these are red letter words. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. For greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Powerful, powerful words. A phrase that becomes part of our life and gives us meaning. It gives us marching orders, a challenge. It teaches us about sacrifice and selflessness 
even to the ultimate sacrifice. Maybe, maybe there is even a greater love. Maybe, just maybe, a pandemic, COVID-19, a global, national, regional, and local health, and now also economic emergency, has shown us an even better way. A nurse based in Los Angeles, California, died after rushing in to save a coronavirus positive patient without an N95 mask. Celia Marcos, who came to this country from the Philippines for an opportunity to work and to provide for her family. She worked at the Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center. She wore only a thin surgical mask as she performed chest compressions on the patient who stopped breathing on the evening of April 3rd. According to a report in the Los Angeles Times, Celia died 14 days later in the same hospital she worked at for over 16 years. As a charge nurse, Celia was required to respond to patients who stopped breathing. The said patient had been confined in the ward that Celia overlooked two hours after insisting that he didn't feel sick, he stopped breathing. Celia resuscitated him and stayed in his room, treating him for at least 30 minutes. The patient was eventually placed on a ventilator before being moved to ICU. On her part, Celia grew concerned after learning, leaving the patient's room. Three days later, she began feeling sick. On April 11th, she told her oldest son, Donald J. Marcos, that she had a headache and was having difficulty breathing. On April 15th, she told him via video call that she had developed pneumonia. On April 17th, her heart stopped repeatedly, requiring her colleagues to resuscitate her multiple times. But it was all in vain. She eventually succumbed to the virus. Her colleagues said one of the last things that she said was, I don't want to die. The Los Angeles Times reported, now we know she gave her life to try to save a life. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Soldiers, sailors, pilots, they have shown us and taught us the meaning of sacrifice for our nation. But it is more, it is so much more. It is the nation they know and love because it is the nation of their family and their friends and their neighbors and the strangers in the community and the people that they don't even know and will never know. National Guard members are leaving the safety of their home in isolation right now to be called up to cover their camo uniforms with hazmat suits of white, masks, gloves, facial shields, taping around their wrists to keep their gloves in place, and going in to assist where outbreaks are considered hot spots and exposure is likely and the healthcare workers are overwhelmed. Fire, EMS, law enforcement, responding daily to situations that happen even without a pandemic, but in the midst of it, every time the call comes in and the sirens go off and they speed toward an address, they go into and risk visible and now invisible danger. Doctors, nurses, orderlies, hospital staff, and administrators like Celia run to, rush toward, provide care, life-saving treatment in life-threatening situations. Today, we see again and again and again selflessness by so many who have risen to the occasion, who have answered the call, have risked health and life in heroic acts of love we will never know or hear about. No greater love. No greater love. 
I wonder, we know there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend, but could, could, could the greatest love be, could it be to lay down one's life for a stranger? Maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe this moment, and I am scared to even say it because I have watched on the news the divisiveness, the anger, the hatred spewing from people from coast to coast. Why? Why in this moment is your interest so much more important than the common good? Why are you selfish when what we need is more serious, more selfless people. But maybe, maybe, my hope, my prayer, maybe, just maybe, in this moment of life-threatening, societal upsetting, economically disruptive moment, we have started to realize there are no strangers. The question of the Good Samaritan is in the front of our minds when we think about this moment. You know the story, right, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. A young lawyer, an expert in the law, asks a question of Jesus. He says to Jesus, Rabbi, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus asks him a question back. What does the law say? How do you read it? You know the story. You know the story. The world knows the story. So much so that we have Good Samaritan laws to protect anyone trying to give aid and emergency assistance. There are hospitals, healthcare centers, clinics, missions, and ministries, all with Good Samaritan in their name and their title. You know the story. You know the story. But let me remind you, on one occasion, an ex expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, Jesus replied. How do you read it? The expert in the law answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus answered, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the young lawyer, the expert in the law, wanting to justify himself, asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. You know the story, don't you? You know this story. The unlikely Samaritan is the one that stops. He provides assistance. He treats the wounds. He serves as a medical transport. He takes the man to a place for long-term rehabilitation and care, and he pays for it out of his own pocket. Jesus then asked the expert in the law who wanted a different answer. He didn't want a story he really didn't want the story he got. He wanted a legal explanation of neighbor, a definition. He wanted case law quoted. He wanted Jesus to say a neighbor is any Jewish male in good standing with the local synagogue who lives within a one mile radius of your primary residence. But it isn't what he got. It isn't what he got. It isn't what he wanted to hear. You know the story. Jesus now asks the question, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, and I'm sure he replied looking down at the ground. Softly, he said, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Who is my neighbor? Who was a neighbor? We know, you know. 
we try to avoid it. We try, we do our best to separate based on anything we can think of. Race, gender, local, outsider, northerner, southerner, educated, not so much, white collar, blue collar, political leanings, sports teams, in heaven, bulldogs and yellow jackets will share a meal and laugh and talk. Gators and Seminoles, war eagles and elephants, even, and this one is hard for me to admit and say, even terriers and paladins will be together. Jesus asked the expert in the law, who was a neighbor? You know the answer. You know it. You've known it since you were a child. You know it as an adult. You know it as a parent, as a grandparent, as a great-grandparent. You know the answer. Who was a neighbor? The one that helped. We are all brothers and sisters. We are all brothers and sisters. Children of God. One holy family. We are all in this together and in Christ with love. Together, loving, we can conquer anything. Anything. Remember verse 13, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. To every person who has made the ultimate sacrifice, to every family member who has had a brave son or daughter, brother or sister, husband or wife, who has paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country, serving in military service on behalf of a grateful nation, we give thanks. To every person who has risked their life for another, we give thanks. To everyone fighting a common enemy, and threat today on the front line, in the trenches that are now ambulances, ER, emergency rooms, ICUs, and portable hospital units, we give thanks and praise. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. But even better, even better, great, greater, greatest. For those, for those amazing people who are willing to risk, even to lay down their lives for a stranger on behalf of a grateful nation every child of God. We give you thanks. The rest of the passage from the Gospel of John reminds us more so that this is not an option. This is not a request. This is not a, a nice idea. This is not a thought for the day. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Red letters, 
Jesus' words, all quotes from the very mouth of our Lord and Savior, this is my command. Love each other. So be it. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, help us not to deceive ourselves. Help us not to try to airbrush away the flaws in our own lives. Help us not to use filters to make us look better. Help us not to be posting and making everything seem glamorous. Help us to see ourselves as we are. And yet while we are sinners, you came for us, you lived for us, you died for us, you arose for us. You chose us. And with that, you've given us instruction. You have told us everything expected. And it is so simple. And yet we make it so very hard. Help us to love God and to love our neighbors. To not argue, to not bicker, to not put down, to not point fingers, to not politicize each and every moment. Help us to search and seek for the truth. Help us to reject lies. Help us to stand up for the weak, to help the oppressed, to rush in, to lift up, and to carry the sick. Lord, we need you now. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us stand together for our closing hymn.
we have just celebrated worship service. It has been said that Christian worship and what happens here on a Sunday is important to remind folks what it is and what it isn't. It is not a lecture. This is not a college lecture hall. You do not hear a talk about some great author or writer or famous person in history. This also, this also is not a memorial service where you're hearing good words and eulogy for someone who is gone and we don't want to forget. This is a worship service. It is a worship service because we come together on each and every Sunday in remembrance of Easter to celebrate a living Christ. The Gospel of Mark ends with the women shaken and afraid at the tomb. And it is that reality of Easter that they are starting to realize is that death could not hold Christ down. And the earth-shaking reality for us is because Christ is not in the tomb, he is alive. And if he is alive, we know he is present. And in his presence, we live our lives and try to act like he's not watching. This Memorial Weekend, we give thanks on behalf of ourselves as individuals, as a congregation, as a community, and as a nation for all those who have given themselves in the act of saving and protecting others. Remember, it's not a request. Jesus gives us a command to love one another. Now may the grace of our Heavenly Father, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and may the love that we take so for granted, may it double, triple, quadruple, multiply, overflow and flood us so that we can show that love to all. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.